So when, uh, when you and I will be old, we will want to stay in our homes as, mu as much as possible with our friends and our relatives. And we want to stay independent and safe. Now, robotics and robotics technology in general can help uh, us to achieve this goal. Now, robots have not always enjoyed a positive image in our society. So if you look, for example, in the first half of the 20th century, robots were depicted as evil machines that would turn against humans. Now, in this 21st century, the situation has changed a little bit. And today, we are capable of building humanoid robots that are actually designed to help us and to assist us in uh, our daily life. And there are already companies and, and uh, universities that can develop this type of robots. However, before we reach this type of of picture, the reality of this type of picture, there is a, quite a few decades of research to go because we need a lot of more effort to put in order to develop the artificial intelligence and the body that match the expectations that we have when we face something like a human. Now, on top of that, Japanese researcher Mori has shown that the more a machine looks like a human or a living system, the more attracted we are. But if it is not quite like a human, then we feel strong repulsion. That is why probably today we don't feel at ease if we have a humanoid robot sitting with us in the, in the living room. Nonetheless, research in humanoid robotics is very important. Because, for example, this is work done at the PFL, uh, where uh, researchers are training robots to learn very complex tasks by demonstration. So they don't program them, they show them how to do things. This type of uh, research is very useful for designing the interfaces of tomorrow, which is one of the big problems. Easy to use interfaces for the uh, uh, third age. Another type of uh, spin-off technology is like exoskeletons and prosthetic devices that will extend our mobility, our manipulation capability. That means it will allow us to work longer in, in the society or simply to move around more easily. More in general, I believe that robotics will be successful, will enter our daily life, when it will disappear. It will merge with our environment. How can it disappear? It must become small and specialized. Just like a colony of insects you like, everybody is capable of doing one thing very well, and their strength comes from the fact that they collaborate together, they communicate together. So these robots will be very small and will merge in our environments. What can small robots do? At the PFL, what we have done is that we develop prototypes of robots that can sense through wireless sensors how a person feels, and if it needs help, then communicate with each other, they come out of the furniture, they grab the person, and physically they pull the person out of danger. Of course, this is a prototype, but you can get the picture. Similarly, along the same type of philosophy, we are developing these days, you can think of them like super spotlights that live on the ceilings or on the walls. They have wireless sensors. They can monitor the state of the house and of the inhabitants. They don't have to film them. They can simply feel and sense if everything is OK, and they can communicate with robots on the ground if some help is needed, or they can call a doctor, for example, if a person needs more help. So I believe that in the future we won't have perhaps a humanoid robot standing nearby us watching TV and checking if we are okay, but we will have a number of different robots or machines that will carry out physical work, will check on us if uh, it's not clear whether we are sleeping or whether we are feeling sick, or will simply monitor the state of the house. Now, developing this type of robots requires quite a lot of developed technological advances. For example, we are working now on a flexible type of eyes, just like the insects, that give unparalleled field of view, sensitivity to different type of uh, luminosities. And this type of technology is not only useful for robots. What we are going to do at the moment, what we are developing with colleagues in France and in Germany, we are developing what we call vision tapes. This will be uh, vision systems that you can put on heads or you can put on the back of backpacks of children. And they will tell a person that cannot see properly whether there are incoming obstacles through vibration in the head, for example, or with the kids with a sound, for example, on the back. So this is the technology that we can use also uh, on daily life. In the future, as my colleague will show later on, we'll be living in mega cities. And the mega cities is just an extension of our houses. So the type of technology that I've shown today that can live on the three-dimensional space of a house can extend to this type of uh, mega cities where we will be living together with uh, our other people. Now, the, this type of technologies, therefore, can help us to do small repairs to monitor the quality of the environment, like pollution, or, for example, to take care of garbage disposal. So I think that robotics in general and robotics technologies has a great promise for the aging society in at least three areas. One is uh, rehabilitation. The second is hazard prevention. And the third is monitoring of the quality of our environment. However, 
these technologies can really enter our society only if they will merge and they will disappear in the environment. And ironically, I believe that in 20 years' time, maybe we won't call them robots anymore. Thank, Thank you. Very much.